Hello, uh, welcome to Soil Structure Software Demonstration of Driven Pile Professional. My name is Liban Afi. Okay, so I've pulled up the uh, Driven Pile Professional software window. And in this example, we'll be using a um, an example from uh, ASCE publication uh, that is Geotechnical Special Publication of Predicted and Observed Axial Behavior of Piles. So, uh, in this example, we have an English unit because that's what the paper is on. And then uh, we're uh, doing a downward load of 100 kips that we picked. Uh, the pile length, according to the paper, is 50 feet. Um, there is no shear or moment. I just added one kip each. And uh, lateral deflection depends on the shear and moment. So, we just selected arbitrarily uh, half an inch. The uh, passive wedge that depends on uh, the soils. So if it's granular soil, it can go up to three. So let's pick the. Let's see what's going on on uh, the pile. So as you can see, this is a three-layer soil profile. L1 is layer one. L2 is layer two, and L3 is layer three. And if you go to the right side, you can see the thicknesses. So layer one is zero to fourteen. Layer 2 is 14 to 21, and layer 3 is 21 to 50. Uh, the loading is shown here. It's downward load, 100 kips. Uh, lateral load of 1 kip and a moment of 1 kip foot. Uh, layer 1 is granular soil. It's SP, medium dense. It's poorly graded sand. Layer 2 is um, granular soil, SP, medium dense. And layer 3 is cohesive soil, CL firm. And if you want to get the geotechnical properties, these are what we entered. K sub H, this is the uh, horizontal subgrade modulus. And it starts at 180 and ends at 230. That means at depth of 0, KH is 0. Sorry, KH is 180 at the depth of 0. And at 14 depth, it's 230. So that's what this 180 to 230 means. Soil friction angle phi is approximately 31 degrees. This is estimated from the SPT values that we enter. Cohesion is 0 0.1 KSF. It's very low. And gamma is 118. And uh, granular soil uh, 2, KH is 230 to 260. And these are the phi, C, and gamma. And for cohesive soil, uh, it starts at 260 because that's where the sand ends. It ends at 260, so naturally it's at 260. So at 20.99 uh, is same as 21.01. .01. So that's why the clay starts at 260, but gradually uh, it decreases to 90 kcf, and the fee is lower. So. In the program, you enter the layer material. Uh, we have all three layers that we mentioned. This is the USCS classification. These are the layer thicknesses. And here is the SPT and corrected. Okay, so layer 1 is 12, layer 2 is 18, and layer 3 is 6. When you enter this 12 and you have picked a material type of granular soil, the software will determine the consistency. So if it's 10 to 30, low counts it will call it medium dense so that's why you have medium dense here and there and uh, if it's uh, four to eight I believe it will call it firm or five to eight it will call it firm we have six here here are the lateral subgrade modulus values this is the layer at the top is 180 and at the bottom of that layer is 230 the the top or the bottom of this layer has to be same as the top of the preceding layer same thing the top or the bottom of this layer has to be same as the top of the preceding layer now because we have determined because we have the uh, s p t values we we will get a fee value out of that and then from the fee the program will determine the case of p value that's used for lateral load resistance and uh, you can specify a factor of safety from 1.25 to 2.0. As you know, in soil mechanics, we try not to use the ultimate uh, passive resistance. We have to use allowable. Therefore, we apply a factor of safety. 
here are the cohesion column and here is the unit weight now if we had a negative skin friction we would check this value and it will do it as a negative skin friction it, it doesn't have to be all three it can be any one or any combination okay so uh, we click on this next after we enter the passive wedge or the the factors of safety for side friction and end bearing you see this little calculator you press on that okay and now you could see design life we entered 75 okay so if we let's say the building was going to be design life 100 years we can enter that as 100 okay then construction control uh, it's either very poor control poor control normal or good control so we could say it's good control the geotechnical consultant will be able to monitor the pile the pile driving and then in that case suggest, suggested factor of safety is 2.3 but let's go back to our 75 and uh, we'll pick uh, let's see we'll pick good control sorry uh, this is 75 and for some reason I my number is not on so let me just go down use the drop down menu and go down to 75 okay and then now factor of safety is 2.0 so okay groundwater depth uh, in this problem is 35 feet and so if you uh, look at the pile length uh, the pile length is 50 feet but the groundwater is at 35 feet okay so and then uh, over consolidation ratio OC ratio is 2.0 for this project you can take a look and uh, let me show you again you press this question mark and you could see uh, from mail may uh, main and Kalawi uh, publication uh, soil properties for foundation design you can get the OCR ratio from there okay hit this button next now you can enter the pile properties so pile soil interface this is going to be a pipe pile so it's rough steel and it's a large diameter so if you go back to loading you see uh, that the uh, sorry the diameter is one and a half feet so it's relatively large so we can say it's a large displacement pile it's not small displacement and it's not jetted pile and the dimension is circle you could choose a square rectangle or octagon in this case it's circle and you could choose static analysis or cyclic analysis okay uh, cyclic analysis is if you have a seismic uh, condition or if you have uh, offshore structure where you have waves so let's go back and do our static condition now the program automatically will compute the cross-sectional area the pile perimeter the end bearing tip area modulus of elasticity we're using english units so it's 29,000. and moment of inertia it computes it and then let's if you uncheck this there is no structural pile design but if you check it that is the structural design that pops up so let's go to that and now the shape is North American we're using English units so that's AISC beams and the problem is a beam column because we have an axial load on a moment and the beam size uh, is HSS 18 by 0 0.375 okay so if you look at it if you click on this it will give you its 18 inch diameter and it will give you the wall thickness as 3 8 of an inch okay yield strength is 50 if you click on here there is a pop-up window that will give you how to determine your k value in this case we're assuming pin pin so it's 1.0 and braced length it's the whole length of the pile uh, for conservativeness and that's all 50 feet and uh, x-axis bending this is cmx uh, from the steel manual and you can read the uh, cat uh, the categories and the commentary but it's safe to say it's 1.0 and compressive strength of concrete 
that would be it's set as 2.5 now this happens to be a, a hollow steel pipe pipe if you wanted to fill it with concrete you come here and you press concrete filled and now when you click on it you could see it fills it with concrete okay so let's take that out okay so now we say calculate results and there we have so it gives you the maximum deflection 0.01 because there was hardly any uh, load and shear or moment maximum moment small maximum shear is small pile tip movement okay you want to check that so what you do is you will say view lateral graphs and you can see the shear with depth the moment with depth the deflection with depth and the deflection and the, and the induced pressure versus allowable lateral soil pressure so the deflection you want to make sure that it passes the zero depth the zero deflection so at somewhere let's see here let's click on this so that if you look over here it will show you so if you have a depth of 15 feet you already satisfy the lateral deflection criteria but not the axial depth that's why we went down to 15 feet and if you want to make sure that you have lateral soil resistance is more or higher than the induced soil pressure so you say view one graph and then you say lateral soil pressure and there you could see it but if you really want to know node by node you say view lateral table and there it is at the very top that's where the maximum lateral pressure is induced pressure is 0 0.13 ksf allowable this is based on allowable is 0.79 so this 0.79 comes from the kp okay and cohesion so we're using friction and cohesion okay so uh and the pile tip move so those were the lateral graphs now let's look at the vertical graphs okay this is the vertical capacity so this green one is the end bearing okay and the blue one is the skin friction and the red one is combining end bearing with skin friction so that's the total but this is allowable capacity and then what you would do is you'd come in and check your movement or settlement so at 210 caps it's only given 0.07 movement so that's reasonable this is the pile load uh, distribution with depth so at the very top you have the total 210.1 that doesn't mean you're going to use 210.1 but that's what the capacity is and at the bottom is the end bearer which is this value here 8.84 okay and the fourth chart is the effective stress with depth as you could see we had at 35 feet uh, we had water so there is the change in the slope of the line Okay, and if you want to see the vertical table, you click on there and it gives you nodes all the way down to 41 nodes, which is plenty. Uh, and then the sigma V prime, that's the effective stress. This is the calculated friction angle. This is negative skin friction. In this uh, pile design, we don't have any. Here is the ultimate uh, side friction that's unfactored. You divide that by the factor of safety we computed. In this case, it was 2. Okay, so if it's 0.36, you get 0.18 kips. And this is ultimate end bearing, and you divide by 2, you get allowable end bearing. This is the combined vertical capacity, which is the allowable end bearing plus the allowable side friction. And here is the pile settlement with the vertical capacity, all the way down to 0.07. Okay, then you can say file, print, okay. Uh, let's say I don't want to save it and you can choose uh, you can say that yeah I want to preview and it will take few seconds to combine the database and get all the pages uh, together okay so now we have page one so this is the software driven by a professional and uh, it gives you the entry the data that you entered and by the way we try to use two columns where we can so we make effective use of the page 
uh, here is the pile properties here are the geotechnical properties and here is the results on page one here is the uh, structural capacity it checks the load the p utilization it's uh, 17 percent moment there was hardly any so it's only 0.4 percent and the combined p and m uh, ratio utilization is 0.09 so nine percent so we're very safe so you click on here you could see the cross section and the loading you click on here you could see the structural design you click here and you, you see the vertical table you see the node the depth and all the ultimate and allowable values per node so you, you at 14 feet you have 31.53 capacity kips here are the vertical graphs okay you can go down and next is the lateral table so you get the subgrade modulus you get the shear moment deflection and then you get the lateral soil pressure and allowable soil pressure this is induced this is allowed and then you get page seven which are the lateral graphs you go down and see all four of them and at the end these are the references we use to make this software so uh, go to uh, soil structure software so you go in here and it's right there soil structure software thank you very much